From failed movie pitches to new beginnings, here's how Teen Wolf died so that the Wolf Pack could survive. Teen Wolf, the hit TV show that first premiered in 2011, had fans going crazy, tapping into the teen fantasy vampire craze when it was at its peak. With shows like Twilight and The Vampire Diaries taking the world by storm, it was clear that young audiences wanted shows with sexy teenagers, supernatural powers, villains, and forbidden love. And that's exactly what Teen Wolf delivered, making it a massive success for MTV. The show ran for six seasons and ended in 2017. But in the six years since the finale, television made for young adults has moved away from vampires and werewolves. And the horror fantasy model that Teen Wolf and other shows like Pretty Little Liars and Scream Queens popularized is still going strong. So it's the perfect time for a revival. And we're getting not one, but two attempts. Teen Wolf the movie and a new series, Wolf Pack. Both premiered on Paramount Plus on January 26, 2023. And the two properties have a common genre element and entangled advertising. But other than that, they have nothing to do with one another at least based on the two episodes of Wolfpack that have been previewed by critics. While fans of the original series might find the lack of context alarming, the divorce provides an opportunity for the franchise to have an off-ramp and a fresh start. Teen Wolf was created by Jeff Davis and became a hit for its unique blend of supernatural elements and teen drama. Now let's dive deeper into the premise of the show, so we can really understand what was going on. Teen Wolf is a show that started as a simple story about Scott, a high school lacrosse player who gets bitten by a werewolf and has to learn how to navigate his new powers while dealing with supernatural threats. And of course, there's a love story involved. But over time, the world of Teen Wolf revealed that Beacon Hills was crawling with all sorts of otherworldly creatures, from banshees to were-coyotes to hellhounds. And the villains became more dangerous and more serious as the seasons went on. But despite all the supernatural craziness, the heart of the show has always been the relationship between Scott and his human best friend, Styles. I need you. You know that. I need you too. I'm gonna miss you. They were always there for each other, no matter how insane the plot became. And this was especially evident in season three, which many fans considered to be the best season of the show. The villain Akitsune-esque Nagitsune spirit was terrifying. But the real emotional punch came from seeing Styles possessed by the spirit and turning on his friends. Now, Teen Wolf the movie is taking a page from Season 3's book and revisiting the Nagitsune arc. But there's just one problem. Dylan O'Brien, who played Styles, isn't returning for the film. And without Styles, the heart and humor that made this show so addictive is missing. Scott and Styles were the dynamic duo that kept the show grounded, even as the supernatural chaos swirled around them. But the question remains, can Teen Wolf the movie recapture that magic without one of its key players? Let's look into the movie to answer that exact question. It's easy to see how the Teen Wolf franchise could become too obsessed with action sequences and lose its emotional grounding, much like its protagonist Scott. Unfortunately, Teen Wolf the movie falls into this trap borrowing heavily from the third season's action-packed Nagitsune storyline, but failing to recapture the show's heart. The film's reliance on nostalgia begs the question of who exactly it's meant for. New viewers would likely be lost without the context of season three, while longtime fans may be disappointed by the film's lack of humor and heart. Although Derek's relationship with his teenage son provides a glimmer of emotional depth, it's not fully developed. and the film's main plot about Allison's resurrection feels forced and underdeveloped as well. Fans of the original series will appreciate callbacks to beloved characters like Lydia and Derek, as well as the show's trademark action sequences. However, they'll also be left confused by plot holes and disappointed by the film's disrespect toward Kira. Introduced in Season 3 as a significant plot driver, Kira is essentially replaced by a new character, Hikari Jong who is barely developed and feels like an afterthought. The film's treatment of Japanese folklore is similarly problematic, as Hikari's character seems to be a shallow attempt to justify the film's use of this cultural tradition. 
Furthermore, the omission of Kira's character is particularly egregious, given how the show had previously abandoned her in Season 5 and reportedly offered the actress less pay than her white co-stars. In short, while Teen Wolf the movie may provide some nostalgic thrills for die-hard fans, it fails to evolve beyond the show's previous shortcomings and falls short in its attempt to honor its diverse cast and cultural influences. The Teen Wolf franchise has had its ups and downs. While the original TV series had a loyal following, the recent movie adaptation failed to live up to fans' expectations. However, a new spin-off series, Wolfpack, based on a book series by Ido Van Velkom, has breathed new life into the franchise. So let's look into the new generation. Wolfpack, the series, centers around the character Everett, played by Armani Jackson, a loner who's bitten by a mysterious creature while evacuating from a fire. He's rushed to the hospital, where he receives threatening phone calls. He went through something pretty terrifying. He saw people die. Warning him that people are out to kill him. His only ally is Blake, played by Bella Shepard, a classmate who was also bitten during the evacuation. Unlike the original series, Wolfpack doesn't try to connect itself to Teen Wolf. There are no overlapping characters, and the show takes creative liberties with supernatural creatures to make them more modern. The freedom to tell a new story without being tied to the original allows the show to grow with the times. Wolfpack is darker and less fast-paced than its predecessor, reflecting its status as a streaming show. It has been picked up for an entire season, which means it doesn't have to depend on weekly ratings, giving it more time to ease into the story. The character development is slow and deliberate, building a sense of foreboding and creating a nice sense of anticipation for viewers. The heart of the series remains the idea of the found family. Everett and Blake, disconnected from their parents and at odds with their classmates, are drawn together by their shared experiences. They're joined by werewolf twins Luna, played by Chloe Rose Robertson, and Harlan, played by Tyler Lawrence Gray, who were found by their adopted father, Garrett, played by Rodrigo Santoro, when they were babies. As the pack forms, it's clear they'll need each other if they want to survive the season. Wolfpack takes a refreshing approach by focusing on character development over plot. It prioritizes the characters' relationships and their journey, and viewers are invested in their growth and survival. The show's technical differences from Teen Wolf make it feel fresh and modern, but it remains true to the heart of the franchise. After the disappointment of Teen Wolf the movie, it's exciting to see the franchise get back to what made it great in the first place. Wolfpack has the potential to thrive and bring a new generation of fans to the Teen Wolf universe. With its emphasis on character and found family, the show is a welcome addition to the franchise and a promising start to a new chapter. From failed movie pitches to new beginnings, that's how Teen Wolf died so the Wolfpack could survive.